We're going to do some text effects in Photoshop today. So if you go to File and New in Photoshop, you can create a blank space to do this in. I like the default Photoshop size, so that's what I'm going to create. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to find the Type Tool. The Type Tool is right here. I'm choosing a font based on prior knowledge of fonts. I like Cooper Black for this one. It just kind of looks good, but you may choose a different font, whichever font makes you happy. I'm going to ask that you don't choose these weird ones that are all symbols or all emojis. Choose one with actual letters where I can actually read the word, okay? So choose, oh, well, Broadway's fine too. Uh, choose Cooper Black Broadway. Choose something that you think is particularly beautiful. You can choose a script font or something like that. Um, I'm choosing 72 is the size. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I do want something large enough that I can see it. If you choose something small, you can stretch it out and make it larger later, but I think I'm just going to start big. And right here with the color, it doesn't matter what color I choose as long as I do not choose white, because my background is white. If I choose white letters, I won't be able to see them. So get right in here, click down, and you'll see a blinking cursor. Write your name. Well, oh, turns out I used Berlin Sands. That's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is pick up with my move tool and move it and center it up and make it nice and pretty. And then I'm going to go back to my type tool. Uh, with my type tool, you see how my properties up here are all about type. I'm going to find my warp text window, create warped text, and I'm going to pull it down to one of these warps, whichever warp you think is particularly pretty. Once you select something, you can change the way that warp works by moving these sliders. Try to make it so that it's still legible and click OK when you're happy with it. I don't quite entirely understand or, or know how to maneuver around in the 3D text, so I'm going to skip that for today because this warp text is going to be good enough for your currency project, which is why we're learning this right now. A couple more things we're going to do. We're going to add a mask to it, an outline, and a background. So for grading this, I want to check for a warp, a mask, an outline, and a background. This is the first part of what I'm grading you on today. The mask is going to come from a pattern. So if you just go to Google and type in some kind of pattern, I went to go find a polka dot pattern. You can find stripes or some sort of rainbow pattern or whatever pattern you like. I would not recommend using a person's face or an animal or something because when you do the mask, it's not really visible what you've done. So save a pattern and open that pattern up in Photoshop. Now you're going to select it. So you can either take a marquee and drag around. You can go to select all or you can hit control A. Once you've got that, you'll take your move tool, pick it up, drag it to the window you've been working in and pull it back down. It's not large enough, so Edit Free Transform right there, or Control T, and you can drag it much, much bigger. Once you hit Enter, the transform will stick, and I've covered up my word. Uh, so the second thing I wanted you to do is a mask. I'm going to come over here to my Layers panel. I've got my background, I've got my name layer, and I've got my layer with the picture on it. Right click on layer one with the picture on it and tell it to create a clipping mask. When you create a clipping mask, it does that. So that's two of the four things I'm going to grade you on. The third thing is the outline, the stroke around it. So if you click on the layer with your word, with your name, you'll see at the bottom of the layers panel an FX window. When you see the FX window, you'll see also under here the stroke. Stroke is the line around it and you can change the color of that line. If you want a bright yellow line around it, you surely can do that. I don't think that looks very good. Uh, if you want to use one of the colors from the pattern, you can double click that and actually see the eyedropper tool comes up and you can click one of those colors, whichever color you love. You can make the stroke fat, skinny, whatever. And you can do other stuff to it too if you want. Ooh, inner shadow didn't look good. <laughs> you can do, uh, bevel and emboss, whatever other effects you like, but I do want to see a line around it. So click OK when you've got that and you can see here that that's bevel and emboss, that's the stroke. You can move the little eyeballs and you can see what you've got. So that's three of the four things I wanted from you and now I want to get to the background. This is my background layer 
And right over here on my toolbar, I've got the gradient tool and hiding under that the paint bucket tool. Paint bucket's the easiest thing in the world. You just click the paint bucket, you pick a color, and you dump the paint. You can pick a different color if you don't like your original choice, right on top of it. Now the gradient tool is kind of interesting and I want to show that to you too. That gives you a choice of gradients up top here. Those gradients are actually based on your color choices here. So if I started to choose a green color, then the gradients would all have green to them in these uh, optional ones. But you can just drag and it creates a gradient. So what I'm looking for today is I'm looking for your name with a warp. I'm looking for a mask on it with a pattern. I'm looking for a stroke around the outside of the word. And I'm looking for a change in your background, either a gradient or just a bucket of paint. Show me that and then I think you're ready to start on your currency.